Hey everyone, and welcome back to our channel. We are absolutely blown away at the recent support of the channel. We are really close to 500 subscribers, so if you want to be the 500th sub, the button is all yours for the clicking. Today we're going to be looking at a topic that's really been making headlines lately, and that's inflation. Currently, the inflation rate in Canada is reaching numbers we haven't seen in over 18 years since early 2003. While a portion of high inflation can be attributed to global shortages in supply, in this video we're going to look at the implications of printing money and answer the question, why does printing more money lead to high levels of inflation? With that said, let's get right into things. Have you ever wondered why countries can't just print more money to pay off their debts or to feed the homeless or to fix unemployment or any other issue for that matter? Now this may seem like a rather silly question, but I think it's one of those questions people might be a bit too embarrassed to ask and there's definitely no shortage of people wondering. The answer? Inflation. Inflation is defined as a persistent, substantial rise in the general level of prices related to an increase in the volume of money and resulting in the loss of value of currency. So first let's determine what exactly money or currency is. Now this may seem obvious, but something that's important to know is that money has absolutely no intrinsic value. What that means is that money itself has no actual value, it's only considered valuable because it can buy things. If you watched our last video, you would know this as the term fiat money. An easy way to wrap your head around fiat money, having no value outside of the value the government assigns for it, is to think, if you were stranded on a desert island, money would be completely useless. Money has been around for thousands of years, however when it was first used it was in the form of commodity money. Again, if you need a reminder of what this is, feel free to check out our previous video. Things were traded that had actual value and uses, like salt, spices, horses, or weapons, as well as precious metal such as gold and silver, which technically don't have any intrinsic value either, but due to their rarity or scarcity, are almost universally accepted as currency. We slowly phased out of using commodity money as it became difficult for you to store your wealth. You'd have to carry it around with you all the time. Then we came up with something called representative money. Since carrying everything around all the time can be difficult, representative money made more sense. Basically, you give your gold to the bank and the bank keeps it safe for you and in return they give you a piece of paper acknowledging that you own the gold. These pieces of paper can therefore be used as money as anyone can go to redeem them for gold at any time. These have evolved over time to the banknotes which we now refer to as dollar bills. These dollar bills are fiat money. Today almost every country in the world uses fiat money. So basic economics tells us that the more money in the economy, the lower the value of each dollar. This is due to money becoming less scarce. Money is now easier to come by and since there's more of it in the economy, the prices of goods and services must also increase to catch up to this increase in money supply. Let's look at an example. If everyone in Canada woke up and saw that the Bank of Canada had given $1 million to everyone in the country, causing everyone to go out and buy a new Lamborghini, we would eventually run out of Lamborghinis. But do you see the issue here? The value of money is so deflated that people have too much of it. There's only a finite number of Lamborghinis available in the country. Do we see the problem here? Let's use a different analogy to demonstrate this. Imagine there's four people on a desert island and each of them have 10 pieces of various fruits and all the fruits are considered absolutely equal in value. Now imagine they discover an entire forest of apple trees on the island. The nominal value of apples has increased because there's more apples on the island, but the actual value of an apple has gone down due to an increase in supply. Nobody really wants to trade for apples anymore since they can just go to this apple forest and get some themselves. Therefore, it now costs 10 apples to trade for one banana since the demand for apples is now low, but the demand for bananas is still high. Just to clarify, in this analogy, the people represent different countries, the fruits, their respective currencies, and the apple tree is all that extra printed money. So to summarize what we've been saying, increasing the supply of money unambiguously decreases its value as it's much more readily available and easier to obtain, therefore less scarce. This creates inflation as prices of goods and services must increase to keep up with the current amount of money in circulation. You can run into some serious issues, however, when inflation or the increase in the price of goods and services exceeds the rate at which people earn money, which in turn creates prices of necessities that are too expensive for people to pay and the cost of living being unaffordable. But more on that in a future video. 
If you're still here, we really hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for your support to the channel. If you like this video and are excited to see more, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment what sort of economic topics you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.